Howdy readers, I'm Jason and this is chapter and verse and uh, we're going to start this two shelf tour today with the uh, fifth shelf on our first uh, fiction bookcase, our fifth and final shelf on that bookcase. And as usual, I'm going to uh, showcase uh, a couple of books uh, off of this shelf. So let's get started. Uh, Right, so the first book I want to talk to you about today is this one here. And this is, oh, there we go. And this is uh, The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. Okay. Um, now this is the edition that was read by both uh, my wife and I. And as you can see, the spine is uh, it's quite worn. I really love these uh, modern library um classics uh, paperbacks uh, with the gold spines in part because every time um, one reads them the spines get uh, just kind of nicely worn uh, so as you can see so hard times here hasn't been hasn't been read yet uh, pretty clearly David Copperfield has been read by one of us so you can see you can see the rubbing on the spine the the edge of the spine there a few years back uh, my wife and uh, her parents and I uh, read uh, three of Dickens's big giant books in honor of the uh, 200th anniversary of his uh, birth. And so we read Bleak House and we read The Pickwick Papers here and Little Dorrit. And uh, The Pickwick Papers, uh, for those of you who haven't read it and who have it in your minds that, uh, you know, the Dickens um, is... Yeah, this this very gloomy, very serious writer, uh, great expectations and and Bleak House. I mean, for God's sake, it's called Bleak House, right? Well, the Pickwick Papers shows you uh, Dickens's comic side, and it's a lot of comic side, right? It's more than seven hundred pages long, not including notes, and uh, it is at times laugh out loud funny. I remember uh, Kelly and I were sitting in a Starbucks. Uh, one afternoon, and she was reading this, and I don't remember what I was reading, and she just burst out laughing, right? People all around us drinking their coffees, and she just burst out laughing. And uh, it was something to do with a little poem composed in the book about a frog on a log. And, uh, oh, God, she was just laughing hysterically. And, um, yeah, in the end of the, by the end of the book, I mean, she was she was in tears. She was so moved, so... Uh, it's a terrific book. So, that's the Pickwick Papers. <clears throat> we'll get in there. And the next book that I want to talk to you about is this one here. All right. So, this is uh, The Driftless Area by Tom Drury. And uh, I remember when we worked at Barnes & Noble in uh, Missoula, we would get ARCs in at the bookstore all the time. Occasionally, we would get a finished copy. And this came in as a finished copy. And I had never heard of the writer. I had never heard of the book. And, um, but it was there. I mean, it was you know, there for, for any one of us to take, uh, to, to take home and keep. And I just thought the cover was incredibly striking, um, even though it's in black and white. I mean... It clearly looks like she has red hair, and um, as Kelly will tell you, this this weird siren song thing for for redheads. Um, but uh, but anyway, so I, I took the book home and read it, and was just blown away by it. Just completely blown away by it. Um, I have since bought it for people. I have since taught it, um, and uh, and just had long discussions uh, with friends and students. Uh, about the book and its peculiar magic, uh, actually. Um, I mean, it really does cast a spell, and you're not quite sure why you find it so compulsively readable and enchanting and mysterious. Um, but after having read it now, I think, God, I want to say I've read it three times now, it became pretty clear to me that, um, that much of the book's magic uh, has to do with the fact that uh, Drury is for my money um, the best contemporary writer of dialogue uh, working today and so as a result the world feels extraordinarily real which is a little bit disarming because there's this kind of fairy tale quality uh, to it as well this this is one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite books so 
All right, continuing on, uh, this here is the uh, first shelf on our second uh, fiction uh, bookcase. So we've got our little, our little goose here and our three little horses here. The first uh, book that I want to highlight on this shelf is this one here. Uh, this is by Margaret Elphinstone, and this is The Sea Road. And uh, Elphinstone is a writer who is just, uh, she's just nowhere even remotely as well known as she deserves to be. So when we think of the Viking Age, uh, whether it's on television or in novels or in nonfiction, um, we think of it as a uh, defiantly masculine period. And Margaret Elphinstone has given us that world uh, through the eyes of a woman. And uh, it is a hell of a good book. Just a hell of a good book. So if you love historical fiction and you sometimes find yourself bristling at the fact that, uh, that much of it uh, seems to get off the ground with um, a kind of silly or cheesy romance um, at its core, and, uh, and you just find yourself wondering why can't they just why can't they just give us some historical fiction that doesn't have this kind of soap opera element to it? Um, well, you need to be reading Margaret Elphinstone because you won't find that in her work. This is serious, uh, just scholarly, rich uh, historical fiction. So this is not wanted on the voyage by Timothy Findlay. This is a very difficult to find book in America. We ended up having to order the Canadian uh, Penguin Modern Classic of it. And so what this book is, is a reimagining of the flood narrative, of the flood myth from Genesis, right? So it is about Noah, okay? And uh, so it's an apocalypse of a different kind. The original apocalypse, we might say. It is a biblical retelling unlike any uh, you will ever find. It is full of humor, it is full of anachronism, and, um, and it is full of uh, strangeness and beauty. And uh, I'll read the back to you. Not Wanted on the Voyage is the story of the Great Flood and the first time the world ended. It is a brilliant, unforgettable drama filled with an extraordinary cast of remarkable characters. The tyrannical Noah and his indomitable wife, Mrs. Noyes, the aging and irritable Yahweh, a chorus of singing sheep, and a unicorn destined for a horrible death. With pathos and pageantry, desperation and hope, magic and mythology, this acclaimed novel weaves its unforgettable spell. Uh, so yeah, it is... A strange book, a beautiful book. Um, it's a kind of curiosity among novels, I think. And uh, and again, it's a book that uh, very few people read or talk about these days. So I urge you to uh, to check out Not Wanted on the Voyage. Anyway, that's our two shelf tour. Um, I will see you guys soon. Uh, later this week, I got a tag to do, and I'll be putting up my uh, April wrap up uh, here shortly. So see you then.